Okay, what I wanted to go over today is um, one way of creating a bottle cap. So here's a cap, bottle, bottle cap. And there are lots of ways to create these. So I'm going to show you a specific way that I did to create this. But one of the things that I see people do all the time is that um, their bottle caps are always fat in the top and I wanted a domed top. So I wanted to show you how I uh, approached doing this. All right, so let's just go back in time. So the first thing I did, and there's lots of ways to do this, I just created a little uh, cylinder. So the way I created it is I just went uh, to cylinder and then just created a cylinder that was at the center of the grid. Nothing big, you know, you can draw a spline and extrude from that, do a push-pull, you know, there's lots of ways to do it, but I just did a cylinder. All right, the next thing I did was uh, I decided that uh, I wanted it to be a little bit smaller, so I just did a, a push-pull on the side. It just made it a little bit smaller. Okay, so the next thing I wanted to do was to come in and uh, give it uh, the dome look. So uh, what I did was I came in and created a new sketch. And initially the way I did create this sketch is I created an arc, okay, a center arc. And so I just uh, put a point on one side point equally on the other side and then you can just pull it up to get a smooth arc. Okay, so that's how I got this arc. As a matter of fact, over there and then all I did was an offset to get it enough so that it just you know crossed over this and then I split it okay so then once I did this as a matter of fact let me just do this so it's easier to see I'll just move this down Okay, so I did an outline like this, and then I drew a line down the center, and then I used my trimmed, and I trimmed off that, and then I joined by drawing a line across there. So that's how I got uh, this piece. Okay, so once I had that, then I'm gonna do a revolve. So I took it and I did a revolve picking the profile, picking the center axis, because this was at the center. And as a matter of fact, we'll just do it as a body right now, and you'll see what this is doing. And let's do Control-5, so you can kind of see. And so what that's doing is clipping the top of that, so it's gonna cut it into a little dome shape. A lot of times I'll do this as a new body and then cut it later in case I want to come back and adjust it. In this particular case, since it's from that spline, it would be easy if I need to do some adjustments, just go back and adjust that spline, you know, then it would have done, uh, it would have been okay. You know, you could have done other things in there like, um, let's go back and adjust this. 
So I could have done something like um, maybe drew a, a little box, say, there. And actually, I need to move that down, say, there. And then I could come in here and I could trim this, this, that, that. And uh, it's giving me some warnings. But that's just that I removed some uh, information. And so now what that would have done was left me a ridge up there. Okay, because I altered that. So as it's cutting it it would have cut a ridge in there. Of course, I could have done it the other way, too. So let's go back. Matter of fact, can I just undo? Let's undo that. Go back to our original piece. Okay. All right, so that's how I kind of cut that. All right, then the next thing I did was um, I wanted to cut some serrations around it to make this a knurled uh, knob. And so all I did in this case is I just created a circle on, on the edge. Okay, so it's just circle, create a circle on the edge is what I did. Okay, so once I had that, then what I was going to do is just do a push-pull and pull that up to cut through it. So you'll see that all I did here was just did a push-pull, pulled it up, and then had it on cut so it cut a little divot out of that. Okay, so then the next thing I needed to do was I needed a hole in the bottom because this was solid. So I just used uh, the hole feature up here, just hole, and I created a hole in it, adjusted how far I, I wanted it to go and the distance that I wanted it to go in because I didn't want to cut all the way through there, so I wanted to go a certain distance. And so I just used the hole tool to cut into that. Okay, the next thing I did was add threads. Now, according to what this is going to be made out of, if this is going to be a metal top to be put on something, then I would have used the thread features. But the thread features, they only really give you profiles for uh, metal threads. Okay, there's no profiles in here for, um, you know, plastic threads so I just put these in here but probably most likely I would have done this as not threads but I would have done it with a coil because with a coil I have more control over what I want and for if this was going to be for a plastic bottle or something uh, I want more control over those threads okay so that's how I put those in there okay then the next thing I did is I came in and I did a chamfer, or sorry, not a chamfer, a um, fillet on these edges, okay, because I didn't want those to be uh, razor sharp like they were, so I'm going to soften it a little bit with a fillet. So I went around and select all the edges and did a fillet for that. And then the last thing I did was an array. So I took this uh, and arrayed it around to cut all this on there. Now, uh, the thing that's really cool, one of the things that's really cool about um, Fusion 360 is it allows you to uh, use features. So it, usually you can pick a body to array and a face array. But what's cool about this is a feature. And since I've etched this in here, I could pick all of these pieces and then said use this feature to array them around. Then I told them how many I wanted. This utility also is also pretty cool because you can suppress. 
So if you do this, I could come in and say, okay, well, I want it to be one, then two, and so you can go in here and make, you know, irregular uh, patterns. So that's really cool that you can come in here and suppress things. And then you click back on those to desuppress them. I guess that's what it would be called. Un unsuppress. And then you're there. There you go. And now that gave me a nice domed cap with some uh, serrated edges and got a uh, some threads inside um, I probably would have come back and filleted uh, this bottom edge softened that a little bit but overall that's how I did it there's just one way to create a cap there's lots of ways to create caps but this is one way that I did it uh, to show specific tools and then to show you how to do a, a domed uh, a cap, which um, it you know takes a little bit to think about how you would do that. Okay, hopefully that uh, helps you guys. All right, thank you very much.